I'm going to start this class with a simple question. What causes acceleration in fluid flows? Mr. Euler, Mr. Euler asked the same question and he tried to answer this question. He considered one bowl of water and there is water inside that. Let's call it a fluid just to generalize things. And then there is a tilted straw inside this. We know that water is going to rise in this. Let's say it rises up to this level over here. And then he considered one specific cylinder inside this risen water. Something like this. And if I magnified the cylinder, it would be something like over here. So he said that we know that the summation of forces in direction of L, and this is direction of L positive over here, is equal to mass times acceleration in, the, in uh, direction of L. Also, we know that mass, let me change the color, mass is equal to rho. Do you still remember the dimensions of rho? The dimensions of rho would be mass divided by length to the power 3. So rho times volume, which has the dimensions of L to the power 3, would be equal to mass. And the volume of this cylinder is simply delta A, which is the cross-sectional area, times delta L. So that's mass. Now, F, or summation of forces, can be written as forces that related to pressure plus forces related to gravity is equal to, so I'm going to put M is rho delta A delta L times acceleration in direction of L. Now let's calculate different forces. I'm going to call this equation equation number one. Now I'm going to calculate different forces. I'm going to start with forces due to pressure. It would be basically the difference between forces on two sides of this cylinder. So I'm going to write P delta A minus P plus delta P times delta A. It would be negative delta P times delta A. And then I have also forces related to gravity, which is equal to the weight of the cylinder. And the weight of the cylinder is delta W, right? So I have negative delta W. Why is this negative over here? It is simple. The direction of, first of all, let me tell you that this delta W will be delta, this is delta WL, it will be delta W times sine of alpha, and alpha is over here. So why is it negative? It is negative because take a look at delta WL and its direction. It's the opposite side of it's on the opposite side of the positive L direction. The positive L direction is this way, but delta WL is in this way, in this way. And because of that, it would be negative. Okay, now let's consider if this is one point and this is another point. Take a look at this triangle that I am drawing right now. So I'm going to draw it over here. This would be that triangle. This is delta L. This is changes in elevation between two points. And obviously, this is alpha. So I can calculate that sine of alpha is delta Z divided by delta L, right? Opposite divided by delta L. OK, so if I put this inside the equation, this would be negative delta W delta z divided by delta l. Perfect. So 
Now the only thing that I need to do is to put all of these inside my equation number one. So if I rewrite the equation number one over here and putting all of the values that I calculated inside that, it would be negative delta P times delta A, uh, negative delta W times delta Z divided by delta L. It would be equal to rho delta A delta L times acceleration and direction of L. What I can do, I can um, simply simplify um, delta W. How? I know that delta W is equal to gamma. What are the dimensions of gamma? It's force divided by L3 times volume. Dimensions are L3. So it would be gamma times delta L times delta A. Right? So if I write that equation again and replacing delta W in the equation, it would be negative delta P times delta A, negative gamma delta L times delta um, A times delta Z delta L equals rho delta A delta L times acceleration and direction of L. I can simplify this equation by simply crossing delta A's and then I'm going to divide the both sides of the equation by delta L. If I do that, then I will have negative delta P divided by delta L. Gamma delta Z divided by delta L equals rho. Let's write this again. Oops rho times a l now if i assume that if i assume that delta l approaches zero then i can rewrite the equation like negative in terms of differential equations so it would be p divided by del l gamma del z divided by del L equals rho A L. Now to just organize that, that green equation again over here, I'm going to write it as um, negative del over del L P plus gamma Z equals rho times a l all right and this is euler's equation but before i end this slide this should be this part of it should be very familiar for you do you remember this part from hydrostatic this part was called what this whole part was called Piezometric pressure, right? So what this equation is telling us is that the acceleration has a direct linear relationship with the gradient of piezometric pressure. It's very interesting. Now, in next slide, I'm going to elaborate on this specific equation that Mr. Euler developed.